Well, good morning, everybody. In this shorter video, I want to highlight some of the main things we're watching here over the next uh, couple of weeks. And I want to kind of entice you into going and looking at the longer range video that I put out earlier this morning, especially the last few slides about the analysis of ocean temperatures. But first, this is your weekend's total accumulated precipitation. And we saw some very heavy rains down in the southeast, large storms into parts of Florida, big snows that hit came out of Montana, but hit North Dakota and then hit the Canadian prairie with much needed snow. But kind of in terms of snow, the region that took the, the, the prize home would be the Sierra Nevada mountains, where some places there picked up well over 10 feet of snow right in through this area. So you can see we're up at that 48, 60, 72, 96 inch numbers in this area. Now we need this. We've got to get the snow to pack back into the West as we finish up this winter time frame. And speaking of finishing up winter, I talk about this in more depth in the other video, but this is just a quick look at your winter precipitation ranks by climate district. Now, one of the regions that you know that I've been watching most carefully has been this region of the Mississippi Valley, Ohio Valley, Missouri Valley, all the way down to the Gulf Coast. We've been watching because back on December 2nd, coming out of our second in a row dry fall, this area's soil moisture has been depleted severely. What's recovered so far this winter looks something like this. And until this changes for these key states in the central United States Ag Belt, until that changes, we're going to be dealing with the risk of additional drought issues going into 2024's growing season. Now remember, when it comes to the way the atmosphere delivers its rain, I make a big talk about this in the other video, but it's all about what has the atmosphere done for us lately, which means spring rain's going to do this in a hurry, and just in time summer rains can make this area, you know, not vulnerable to this drought stresses below the uh, uh, below the um, the surface here. So subsurface soil moisture problems continue to show up. We're actually starting to see some of this come back in the Mississippi River data as well, where today it's about seven feet above low stage. We do expect it to stay in this range, but having a big spring flood on the Mississippi isn't too likely at this point, based on what I got at the beginning of March. We did get a new drought monitor, but what I want to show you is the change map. This goes back to the beginning of the year. So while we saw substantial drought relief in this part of the south, pockets of the Mid-South toward the Appalachian Mountains, back down to the Gulf Coast, this section of North Carolina, sections of the Midwest, and this part of the Northern Rockies getting out here into Montana and North Dakota, we did see drought building. Now, this entire pattern and the potential relief in these drier areas is going to hinge on this. What you're looking at is out in the middle of the Pacific, the split. And I talk about this a lot in the other video, but the position of this split is actually critical to the success of systems rolling off of the Rocky Mountains after coming through the West and delivering moisture to the rest of the country. We keep it here, the pattern stays active. If it shifts around at all, everything's going to change. So keep that tucked away in the back of your mind as I walk through this little bit. Here's another big uh, just announcement. Last week on Thursday night, the ECMWF released to the public their AI model. And I've got it. And I spent the weekend getting it downloaded and mapping it. And we're going to start to see some additional content from the European models, precipitation forecasts, and other parameters as well. But this map shows you the next 10 days from the European model on precip. This is the AI version, though. Extremely wet south and up the east coast. Better rains. This is key coming into this section of the Midwest. But take note of this drier area in through here and also along the high plains. The Sierra Nevada get a break, but we do see strong flow coming right across this section of Oregon, California, into Idaho over toward Yellowstone. And we're going to see this again in the models in a few moments. So today we have wind chill watch up north. We still have winter weather advisory in the system going toward the Hudson Bay, but strong onshore flow has got our winter storm warnings prompted for this part of California and Oregon. Same thing for this section of, uh, of Colorado. Dense fog down south. To see the risk of thunderstorms today, the Storm Prediction Center has got a larger area of moderate, excuse me, marginal, marginal risk, not moderate, marginal risk in through here. And that's because there's going to be this lingering front that gets left in that area. It's right here by the time we get into the overnight hours. Meanwhile, this nice little low curls up through parts of North Carolina into the mid-Atlantic, and we need the rain here. We needed it in this part of North Carolina as well. So great to see that. And the push of moisture that's coming in here does eventually make its way into the northern plains too. So as we get into Tuesday, playing out there toward Tuesday afternoon and evening, you can see that taking shape. And as we watch this system roll through the northern part of the country, there's another one that comes out of the lower Mississippi River Valley, soaking the southeast and moving right over the Carolinas again, which need this moisture in a big way. To 
see it go beyond that. There we go. This is the newest update from the operational GFS and European model, not the AI versions. But as we play this forward, this is getting through Tuesday into Wednesday. And what I'm watching carefully is late this week in the central United States. Can we get a slower low? Remember, we talked a lot about this last week. That's the low that's just cut off here like this, sliding across the central United States, getting to the Ohio Valley and spreading into New England. Some of the forecast models over the weekend wanted to forecast a big nor'easter for next weekend right there. But predicting the snowfall amounts in New England at this point is not going to be something we'll be able to do accurately at all. But we'll keep an eye on it regardless. But that's the system. When is it? It's the 7th, 8th, and 9th. Remember, we're talking a lot about that. And the pattern doesn't end after this. We have another low coming into the Pacific Northwest following that. But if we stitch this all together and now look at the operational dynamical models, that's your next seven days of total accumulated precipitation from the Euro. This is from the GFS. And this is the difference. Okay, so the wetter European model shows up here. The wetter GFS shows there. Now, there's a mess. So we need to get beyond this and look at the ensembles. But before we do that, here's the chance at snow. And while we expect heavy snows here, also some really good snows into this part of the Canadian prairie getting over toward Ontario. I have no idea what's coming into the Northeast just yet. We will watch out for little skiffs of snow getting through this part of the upper Midwest. The European is much, much lower on the amounts than the GFS is here in parts of, well, the UP getting into Wisconsin with this next system. But good snows, again, here in parts of the Front Range getting into the Central Rockies and in this section of California and Oregon. On the probability side of it, there's your chance of getting an inch. And if we start stepping this up, here's the chance of getting, ah, I just got the new model running, darn it. Let's go back, sorry. I'm gonna do that twice to you today. This is the chance of getting three inches. So again, one inch, three inches, six inches. Now I love this. I don't know what's coming in here. That's gonna be tricky. But out west, another foot of snow is possible. Some places you're picking up two to three feet in this section of the Cascades and the Northern Ranges here in California. If we look at the drier side of things, remember I showed you this in the European AI model. That's one area. Here's the High Plains is another, and the desert southwest is as well. But as I flip this up to who's on the wetter side of it, we should get the new model run, which we did. So let's go back and fix that. All right, there is the probability of an inch, two inches, look at that, and four. So the southeast and up the east coast wet, northwest is wet. From here, take a look at what happens by the time we get about, I don't know, 11 days out from now. That split is gone. And that means mid-month change in the pattern. Now, right now, the models are still struggling with what that's going to mean. Because the CPC says, well, the 11th through the 17th still stays a bit wetter here. The European, though, is the first to dry out. And we're going to watch the European, let me rephrase that, to get a little drier. Not dry out, but to be a little drier. So that could mean a bit of a transition time period toward mid-month, and I just want you to keep an eye on this with me. Temperature-wise, frost risk is shown in gray. But if we look back over all of winter, this is what the ranks are going to be for winter. Now, you can just pause it and have a look at that. But the Midwest, Upper Midwest, Northeast, Great Lakes states, warmest winter on record. Where are the temperatures going? Well, I can tell you today that the 50-degree isotherm and soil temperatures at 4 inches rolls right through there. That's a lot of warm soil now, but please understand, I have some concerns about where the temperatures are going to go. Here's today's highs compared to average, very windy where it's quite warm. This is into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of this week, getting in toward the weekend, Saturday into Sunday. Now that's when that low curls up the East Coast. We'll have to watch that one carefully. Notice we back away from the excessive warmth. Instead of being 30 degrees warmer than normal, we're 5 to 8 degrees warmer than normal. And if we look out there day 5 through 10, we still don't see the major cool off in this area. But day 10 through 15 brings in a little bit more mild air into the west. Now, why am I watching this? That split in the jet stream way over here, if it starts to meander closer to the west coast, we split the flow there, bringing in ridging to the west. That is the one thing that could start to deliver cooler air into the eastern United States. It's a possibility. It would really help if the MJO would sweep out way over here into phases 8 and 1 to make that happen. But as it stands over the next, well, 15 days or so, it's going to go through phase 5, which is north of Australia, toward phase 6, which is northeast of Australia, and try to get into the western Pacific. But does it make it there? The ensembles say no. Now, 
In response to this, though, the European model is suggesting that the end of March and beginning of February cools back off in this area. And if it does, it will not be as cold as advertised over here. But if it doesn't, if the MJO collapses and pops right back out of Australia, this region stays cooler and we lower the risk of getting some cooler weather in here. So all this warmth we've had as of, as of late, we just need to take it with a, you know, I don't know, a grain of salt. You just need to understand that it's not set in stone just yet. Go watch the other video because I talk about this. I pick on the Corn Belt today. Our longer term trends and what drives the really cold conditions. And what it boils down to is a discussion of something called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. Go watch it for the details. But where I want to finish with you today is in South America. We see that over the next 10 days, better storms expected to return into Argentina. It had some big ones over the weekend in northern Argentina. This is all along the Parana River. Normal to above normal rains in the eastern, northeastern growing areas here, but drier coming off the Amazon into the center west. But the longer range models backed away from the extent of the drier conditions through mid-April here. If that MJO goes back toward Australia, this all gets very dry again, and we'll watch that and keep you, uh, keep you up to date on it, okay? Thanks for your attention. We'll talk again uh, soon. Thanks.